You may not know this because the beginning of June is very often targeted towards Stanley Cup final and crowning a new champion in the NBA. But the Women's World Cup will take place in France starting on June 7th and running for a full month. So through the 4th of July, a big date, obviously, in our nation's history. And, of course, Team USA is one of the favorites, uh, certainly as the defending champ wants to get on that pitch with pride. Uh, It's really cool to get the perspective of uh, not just a player, not just someone who competed, but someone who excelled and has the the hardware to show for it. Heather O'Reilly, a longtime midfielder with Team USA, has three gold medals as part of the women's soccer team and also uh, that 2015 championship uh, that we all remember, one of the most watched games in U.S. soccer history. And it's awesome to catch up with her and have a few minutes to pick her brain about what's to come on this international stage. Heather, let's start with you personally. It's only been a month since you retired from Team USA. How different does it feel now that your routine going into a World Cup has totally changed? Yeah, it's been a time of transition for me and my professional career. So I hung up my boots with the U.S. national team in 2016, but wanted to play for a number of years after that um, at, at the club level. So I've been playing the last few years. I went over to Arsenal in London, and now I'm wrapping up my career in North Carolina with the North Carolina Courage. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the end of an athlete's career is always really an emotional one. We've been doing this for a long time. I've been, you know, at it, uh, and it's been weaved in and out of my life since I was, you know, just five years old. So uh, it's going to be bittersweet uh, come the fall when I hang up my boots as a professional player. But the good thing is, is I love this game very much and I know that'll be part of my life in a lot of different ways going forward and uh, beginning this summer I'm actually going to be over in France uh, in a different capacity at the Women's World Cup in in, uh, in the broadcasting field uh, with Fox and will be a studio analyst for all the games at the Women's World Cup so it'll be a different approach for me I've been part of the last three World Cups as a player so this one being on the other side of the lines will be a different kind of opportunity and challenge, but one that I'm really looking forward to. The U.S. women's national team has gold medals and World Cup titles and this track record of success that stretches back decades now, Heather. It can be really difficult, and yet the U.S. team on the women's side makes it look so easy. Why is there so much success? A couple of things came into play for us. Um, It's going back all the way to the 70s when Title IX was enacted in our country. And I think because of Title IX and because of college soccer, uh, we definitely had, you know, an earlier start than a lot of other countries in terms of our national team program. We had some pioneers of the sport like Anson Dorrance and Michelle Akers and and then, of course, Mia Hamm that passed the torch for a long number of years to then again, Abby Wambach and, and then my generation of players. And now, you know, being led by somebody like Alex Morgan, for instance. So we've we've had wonderful leadership that kind of came before us, and we've been able to pass the torch. And that torch is is getting it done on the field, is competing on the on the pitch and winning, uh, and also you know developing the game and 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 fighting for more um, outside the lines. So it's been a tradition of of winning, and and as you know, like bre- winning breeds winning. And I think because we had an early start and an early legacy uh, that gave us a competitive advantage and it gave us a confidence that we hold on to today. The winning definitely draws more attention, more eyeballs, especially around a World Cup or an Olympics. Uh, And so many of the players that you mentioned, either the current team or past stars, are household names among sports fans. And yet there is still a fight for equality, whether it's equal treatment, whether it's equal resources. And it's not just women's soccer, Heather, but why is that fight so important to you and some of your former teammates? Well, it's important to me first and foremost because, you know, the national team is first and foremost a nonprofit. And I think that that's what we forget about sometimes because it is, you know, it is treated like a professional program. But at the end of the day, it's a nonprofit. It's Team USA. I think in that capacity, you know, equality is really important. This is, you know, the same team that's representing your nation. And and our nation is composed of of females and and males, you know. So um, in a lot of ways, I think that there should be a base case for equality. And I think, uh, you know, 
we can do the math and just investigate things. And, and it's just we're always behind in every category of marketing dollars, of stadiums that are being used. As we saw, obviously, last Women's World Cup, uh, it was played on field turf, which would just simply never happen in the men's game. And, and, and listen, I mean, we get it on, on a lot of levels um, in terms of the world popularity of soccer, which therefore trickles down, the economics trickle down. But at the end of the day, if somebody needs to break the cycle, somebody needs to be the leader. Um, and we think that U.S. soccer and, and America should be that person and should be that leader that says, you know, enough. That the men, quite frankly, had a hundred-year start. So, of course, they're going to be advanced in certain, you know, ways. And uh, let's, let's equal the playing field. And uh, we think we have an opportunity to do that. With the World Cup just a few weeks away and the U.S. women's national team about to be on this international stage again, how can you continue to make people understand why this fight is important? I think the team has and will always get the public's attention because, uh, you know, we do things the right way in terms of, um, first and foremost, never letting it affect our performance on the field. I think everybody knows that we are always going to be competing for championships we you know we have a very high standard for the women's national team and our standard is win or bust basically and not a lot of other countries feel comfortable saying that because it's that's a very incredibly high standard but it's one that's always been set for us and it's one that I hope will always be the standard going forward so I think that we you know we back up our words with action and um, and, and people want to root for us because I think that we are relatable people uh, we're hardworking. We get it done on the field. And uh, I think that they they know that we have, you know, the best interest of the sport uh, at heart. We're not, you know, greedy um, athletes that are making, you know, multiple hundred million dollars. And, uh, you know, we are doing this for the good, you know, for the game and for our love of the game. But at the end of the day, you you can only say that so far before you just kind of say, wait a minute. Uh, this actually isn't fair. And so I think that that kind of is, is what the story is that people hear from us. And um, I think that there was going to be a lot of eyeballs on the women's team at the World Cup. I think it's pretty obvious that the professionalism is there with the U.S. women's national team. Heather O'Reilly is a former member of that squad, won the 2015 Women's World Cup, and is also a part of three gold medal winning teams. She's with us here after hours on CBS Sports Radio. So, Heather, you'll have to answer this question a ton in your new role as an analyst for World Cup games. What did it mean to you to wear the red, white, and blue and represent the United States on the international stage? Uh, It's incredible. I mean... First and foremost, I think that you just think about the hundreds of thousands of females that would want to be doing that. And, you know, that is the top 23 players in the nation that are being, you know, asked to represent uh, the country. Uh, So it's an incredible honor. I think um, sport has an opportunity to really inspire people, to bring people together. Uh, You know, it's not just a game. There's a lot more meaning behind it. There's a lot more weight behind it. Um, so all those things kind of combined, it, you know, gives you, uh, it really does give you goosebumps to be able to, uh, to do what you love, but to be doing something that's actually very important and very meaningful. Um, and there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears in, in there. You know, it's not easy. It's not easy to maintain that elite level for a long time. I was lucky enough to play in three World Cups myself. And um, I mean, that's amazing to be able to maintain that level of eliteness for so long um, is something that I'm really proud of. And it's certainly not easy, as, as you can imagine, to be in that top top 20 players in America for, for that many years. So, uh, yeah, I know the U.S. team is really proud. We're really proud of them. And I know that they'll do fantastic in France. Soccer is a game that very often you can dominate and yet still not have the goals on the board to show how well you have played. Not very many people can answer this question, Heather. So what does it feel like to put that ball in the back of the net on the World Cup stage? (laughs) Oh, yeah, no, I mean, what a dream. I've been uh, lucky enough to bag a couple World Cup goals. Um, I think for the U.S. team, to be honest, it's, it's a little bit different. I think that if you ask people all around the world, it, that would be the pinnacle of, of their life. Um, and for us, it's winning. You know, yeah, we want to score goals, but 
sometimes, you know, it's not you that's scoring. And, um, you know, what happens at the end after the final is really kind of what we care about. So, um, you know, it, it, it's great to score. But, even you know, winning the World Cup is, is kind of the best for us. But uh, certainly scoring goals is a lot of fun. I know that I was able to score one of my best goals ever was in 2011 at the World Cup in Germany. And I scored uh, a long distance strike against Colombia that uh, is probably one of my best goals ever. Uh, and to do it on the World Cup stage was really special. It's kind of one of those shots that you maybe make in training where like nobody's watching. But this time, hundreds of thousands of people were watching around the globe. And uh, yeah, that, that felt pretty cool. Awesome. Like I said, not many people can tell that story. Thank you so much for sharing it with us, Heather. (laughs) There are stats and trends that prove the benefits of participating in sports for little girls, young women, uh, even into their professional careers, how it can be a benefit to them. Why is it important for you to partner with the U.S. Soccer Foundation to get more little girls and young women involved in playing sports? Well, I've always loved supporting U.S. Soccer Foundation, mostly because I recognize the awesome opportunity that I have as an athlete to to improve the lives of others. I know that how soccer has improved my life. I mean, giving me, you know, self-esteem and, and leadership qualities and lasting friendships and a healthy lifestyle. And obviously the list continues on and on about how this amazing game has shaped me as an individual and, and contributed to my life. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to do that. You know, I know that I was kind of from, a, you know, a, a privileged environment in terms of I had two two loving parents that were able to bring me to practice and coaches that were supportive and I had uniforms and fields and all that. And I know that, you know, not everybody in our country is as fortunate as that. And I just want to make sure that um, all the young young people across the world, whether, you know, in, in cities and in, in rural environments and suburbs have, you know, an equal opportunity to participate because, what you get out of soccer is huge for the individual and for society at at large. So I just want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to play. And then once they're out there, um, make sure they're getting everything out of this amazing game. She's a three-time Olympic gold medalist, the 2015 Women's World Cup champ with Team USA, Heather O'Reilly with us here after hours on CBS Sports Radio. How much does it mean to you when you meet little girls and young women who want to follow in your footsteps and be just like you? Uh, it means a lot. It's something that I definitely take very seriously. I was fortunate to have some female that, you know, were my role models growing up. And these were my local high school athletes. And, uh, you know, I would go, I grew up in New Jersey, so I'd go to Rutgers University women's soccer games and Princeton University soccer games. And actually, I saw the 1999 Women's World Cup when I was just 14 years old. So it was a really influential sporting event for me. And uh, I still remember that feeling. I still remember how hopeful I was and how inspired I was. And to kind of be on the other side of it, um, it's a huge privilege and something that I, I definitely take very seriously. So although I'm not a perfect human, I really try to um, to act in a way that would make you know, those little girls proud and we'll give them something to, to look up to. And, and hopefully when they're in my shoes, you know, the, the world is in a much better place because of, of how I left it and how they left it. Over the course of your two decades with Team USA participating on the international stage, how have you seen the sport grow and also the attention around the sport grow? You know, there's been ebbs and flows of growth. I I think that it would be a lie to say that it was a steady incline all the time because at least on the women's side, you know, there's been highs and lows. We're into our third iteration of a women's professional league um, and we're at its sixth season. So that's uh, exciting and hopeful for us that it will be there for the long term. But, you know, in between the 99 women winning the World Cup and And then us winning it in 2015, there was lots of ups and downs in between that. But I think generally overall as a country, I think that soccer is continuing to grow and and make its way into like the main stream sports. Um, I think that like my parents' generation, for instance, didn't have a lot of opportunities to play soccer. And now we're kind of getting to the point where, you know, a lot of people have had the opportunity to be at least a participant in soccer. So I think the cultural uh, view on the game is changing. You know, obviously the coverage that we have of the Premier League games and, and Champions League games on the men's side, at least, are increasing. So 
when I I hear people talking about soccer, it's, it's uh, you know, it perks my ears up because I think, like, finally, like, it's made it in America. And I don't think we're completely there yet. Obviously, we see, you know, you know tough crowds sometimes at MLS or NWSL games. Um, but I think the, the tide is turning, and it's exciting to kind of be part of that movement. And I know we've got a ways to go. I lived in London, and they eat, sleep, and breathe soccer. So, uh, we have a little ways to go before we get to that point, but I think that it's coming and uh, it's exciting to be part of. Well, a few more iconic moments on the World Cup stage will do even more to grow the sport, and, and we're on the cusp of yet another incredible tournament. Heather O'Reilly is a veteran of Team USA for gold medals, for Women's World Cup medals. Uh, it's so great to have a couple of minutes with you. Thanks so much, and enjoy your new role as an analyst. Yes, thanks, Amy. Thanks for having me. Amy, thanks for having me.